Hey guys, it's Celestia, and today we're going to be talking about finding work in the art industry. Now, to be clear, technically any art-related job could be considered work in the art industry, but what I and most others mean by industry work is contract or project-based professional work for a company, organization, or group of some sort. So while taking commissions could, again, technically be considered working in the art industry, for the specific context of this video and the majority of related discussion in the community, that's not what's being referred to. If you're looking to find examples of the type of work I'm referring to, or seek out potential job openings, I would personally recommend ArtStation. It's what I have the most experience with, and to my knowledge, it's the biggest, most popular platform on which to advertise art industry positions. Anyway, as of recently, I've now been on both ends of industry work, applying for and working industry jobs, although only in a freelance capacity and never anything permanent or long-term, and now hiring for paid illustration-based positions via ArtStation. The latter is very much a new development, and it's for an organization I work for and not myself, but it's definitely given me a unique new insight into the hiring process that I very much did not have before. And as such, I thought it could be helpful to make a video about it, because I know for me personally, the information and insights that I've found are things that I really, really wish I'd known before when it came to seeking and applying for industry work. So if it can help any of you in the same way, that's the dream, baby. Sorry, I've been watching a lot of video game donkey. I'm also going to be combining this video with the one that I had planned about making a good portfolio for your art, because these two topics go so hand in hand that I had to scrap the portfolio script because of how often I was just repeating myself with things I'd already written in the outline for this one. A strong portfolio is just objectively the most important part of getting industry work, so naturally we have to go over how to make a strong portfolio. But before we get into any of that, the first priority should be figuring out what kind of industry work you're interested in pursuing and whether or not you're currently qualified to pursue it. And by qualified, as a disclaimer, no, I don't mean whether or not you have a degree in it, but I'll get to that. Anyway, a big problem I see is the generalization of types of art. And by that, I mean that a lot of artists tend to have this belief that because they're really good at one type of art and have a good grasp on the fundamentals, they're automatically going to be good at all other types of art, and subsequently are automatically qualified to take on work of any type. The biggest examples I've found are artists who think that being good at illustration means they can do character design without ever having designed a character or studied character design simply because they can draw existing characters well. And artists that think their illustration experience translates to graphic design via osmosis or some shit and follow the same pattern. These are completely separate types of art, and if you have no experience doing them, you need to stop expecting not only to be instantly good at them without practice, but to be hired to do them with no background in it. So with that in mind, like I said, figure out what types of positions you want to pursue based on what skills you either currently have or intend to learn and study, and make sure you're qualified. And again, by qualified, I don't mean formally educated. I mean, do you have experience working similar jobs? If you're applying as a character designer, do you have a reasonable amount of completed, polished character designs separate from your other art to demonstrate your skill? And for the record, anything can be experience if you word it right. Online courses count under education on your resume. Personal projects count as experience of whatever type of art you utilized for them. Hell, your OCs count as character design experience if you've finished professional-looking character sheets for them. Yes, previous industry experience is obviously going to be preferred and even frequently required, but if you don't have that, it's better to include the other experience you do have instead of just saying, yeah, I don't have professional experience or education, so I won't include anything at all. Experience is just as valuable as education. Which, side note, is another thing I learned from being on the hiring side rather than just the applying side. Education really doesn't matter. I knew experience was just as important, on an intellectual level, but I still assumed that most people applying to industry positions were formally educated with art degrees, and that I was therefore at a consistent disadvantage. In reality, at least in my experience, there are at least twice as many applicants with no formal degree-based education than those with one, which really took me by surprise. But what I found even more surprising than that was how little difference education made when it came to the quality of work in the artist's portfolio. I'm looking at all of the applications I received while I script this right now, and if I didn't have the resumes attached to tell me who does and doesn't have a degree, I would not be able to tell based on skill alone. There are extensively educated artists who are straight up subpar. There are educated artists who are average. There are educated artists who are exceptional, just like the artists without formal education. Consciously, I knew that having an art degree doesn't make you amazing at art, much less automatically better than people without one. But actually being in a position to see the educational experience of all of these applicants compared to their work solidifies that so much more. I have never been more confident in my assertion that art school graduates are not better artists than people without degrees. Their skill varies just as much as their less educated counterparts. 
And because of that, on the hiring end, I have to stress so strongly that what does matter in your application isn't your resume and experience, but the strength and relevance of your portfolio. So let's talk about your portfolio. When I say you need a strong portfolio to apply for industry work, I don't just mean with regards to the quality of your work. Obviously, that's important. And to be blunt, you're not going to get industry jobs without high quality work. But going back to the example of illustrators applying for character designer jobs, you could be the best illustrator in the world with the most gorgeous, fully rendered, beautifully painted, finished pieces in your portfolio. But if you have no concept art or character sheets there, you're not going to get that job. Now, to be clear, I'm not using that to say that you shouldn't include those beautifully rendered illustrations in your portfolio at all if they don't represent the kind of work that you'd be doing for the job you're applying for. It may not be the kind of work they're looking for, but if it shows your skill, you should obviously keep it there anyway, because that's, you know, never a bad thing. Instead, I mean that for every type of work you're interested in pursuing, or at least interested in using that particular portfolio to apply for, you should have a separate, individually linkable section. For example, in my portfolio, I have a gallery section, which is a compilation of almost all of my recent work, I have a character design section, I have an apparel design section, and I have a commission examples section. All of these are used to apply to different jobs or attract different types of customers, while still being accessible on the same site that shows the entirety of my work if they're interested in that too. It's important to remember that employers for industry work tend to receive a lot of applications, so if they have to dig through a huge, unorganized gallery of a random variety of artwork to find examples of the type of art they're interested in hiring you to create, there's a good chance that they either won't bother or you'll make a weaker, less memorable impression. And if you're trying to stand out against a whole gigantic looming pile of other applicants, that's obviously not what you want. Some other portfolio tips while I'm at it. Please, please try to use an actual website like Wix or Squarespace for your portfolio rather than just linking your social media. It's not a professional look, and it also makes it largely impossible to organize your portfolio like I just recommended. Site makers like those I mentioned also allow you to customize the look of the site to fit your brand, stand out, and look exactly how you want them to. And on that note, make sure you do try to make yours look good. Not too busy or overwhelming so as to avoid it distracting from your art, but personalized, streamlined, and aesthetically pleasing. Also, mobile-friendly. Please, please make it mobile-friendly. Next, make sure that the work on your portfolio reflects your current level of skill. As your art improves, the work that you uploaded to your portfolio a year ago might not accurately reflect the best that you can do now. And while you may personally still enjoy that old work regardless, it's not always a great idea to keep it on your portfolio anyway. Keep it for yourself, keep it on your social media, but your portfolio should be a place to display only your best work. And that means making sure there's nothing on it that you wouldn't be proud to create today. Quality over quantity is always better. Finally, and you would think that this one would be common sense, but I've learned that it apparently is not, don't include gore, explicit content, or any other kind of not safe for work art on your portfolio unless you're applying for a not safe for work position or it's in its own walled off, clearly labeled section and not included amongst the rest of your work. I shouldn't have to explain why, so you know what? I'm not going to. Moving on. So with all of that portfolio advice out of the way, my next tips for getting industry jobs are actually just things not to do. Specifically, things that made me personally skip over applications altogether without further consideration. So let's say an employer posts a listing on ArtStation and asks that you email them your application, including a resume and a portfolio. If you email them and send nothing but a link to your portfolio or resume, and yes, some people have been so lazy that they only included a resume with no portfolio or art examples at all, that's a surefire way to not get the job. If you're so unbelievably uninterested and lazy that you can't be bothered to take five minutes to type even a few sentences as a greeting and an attempt at professionalism, employers will not be bothered to take five minutes to click that link. Other applications I completely skipped over were from artists who blatantly had absolutely no experience with the type of work we were looking for. If someone's hiring an illustrator to draw splash art for their project and you apply with a portfolio of 3D design as if they're gonna somehow change their mind about what they're hiring for in the first place, I should not have to tell you why that's dumb. And yet it happens. Finally, the other types of applications that I would skip over altogether were those that claimed, in their application, to have experience with the type of work we were looking for, only to link a portfolio that had absolutely no art examples to back that up. So again, I can't stress this enough, make sure your portfolio includes relevant examples. Alright, with all that out of the way, I'll conclude the video with some general tips for your applications. First of all, be professional. Just because a lot of these positions require you to email in your application doesn't mean it's any less formal, and you should treat those emails like cover letters. Be concise, direct, to the point, and tell the client honestly why you're interested and why they should hire you. Not too honest, I mean like obviously 
obviously you want the job because you want money and the general ability to purchase food to, to sustain your continued existence, but try to come up with something even vaguely more compelling than that while still being honest. Anyway, as I was saying, that email is your chance to convince them that you'd be a good fit for the job, so make sure you do. Be confident and straightforward and tell them your factual qualifications, but don't embellish or get too unnecessarily wordy and detailed about it. Again, these people get tons of applications and the amount of attention they're willing to pay to each one is limited, so get your point across well and quickly. And don't oversell yourself either. Like the number of people who will say that they're the best possible artist for the job, that they can do everything you want and more, that they're a modern day Da Vinci who can cure the plague and piss gold and overthrow the patriarchy. Jesus Christ. And while we're at it, don't kiss ass. You wouldn't go to a McDonald's interview and say that you want the job because you love McDonald's as a company. You're obsessed with their business. You live and breathe McDonald's. Your one and only true passion is Ronald McDonald himself and your mission in life is to commit your body and soul to making the best Big Mac the world has ever seen. Not because you want it for you or for the money, but because you just want, more than anything, to be the best employee you can be for McDonald's' sake. Obviously I'm exaggerating, but you get my point. Employers know you're not in this because you love their company. You're in this because you want a job and you think you can do it well. Claiming otherwise is almost always blatant insincerity, and if you think you're convincing anyone it's not, you're wrong. It's impressive, ambitious, and an overall good idea to research the employer beforehand to at least know what you're talking about if you do want to express interest in their company or project. But make sure you know what you're talking about and make sure you mean it. It doesn't impress anyone to act like you care about something that you don't. And if you want to establish that personal connection, do so by actually finding something about their company that genuinely interests you and communicate that to them. And okay, last gripe. Don't ever say to whom it may concern. That's the easiest way to use the first sentence of your email application to say, I couldn't take 30 seconds to look at your job posting to find your name or at least your company name. Take the 30 seconds, oh my god. Next, not all jobs actually require you to send a resume, but even if they don't, it's never a bad idea to send one anyway. Going one step further is always a good way to express that you're professional, interested, and serious about the job, and it makes you stand out just a little bit more than your peers. I've also seen a lot of people use PDF portfolios that are specific to the job that they're applying for, showing relevant examples that that employer could personally use in addition to their linked resume and portfolio, which I think is a really good idea. Might snatch it. Another thing I feel like I shouldn't have to say, don't list irrelevant experience in your application. It's one thing to list a variety of types of experience on your resume and include that, but in your actual email to the potential employer where you're telling them why they should hire you, don't list a whole bunch of random achievements and qualifications that have nothing to do with the job you're applying for. If you're applying for a graphic designer position, the employer is not going to care about your voice acting, your music, or your professional dance career. Finally, the last thing I want to mention. If English isn't your first language and you're applying in English for an English-speaking position, please don't worry about it not being perfect. I've personally gotten a lot of applications from artists whose first language is not English, and that's never once been a reason not to consider them. So long as you put a clear effort into trying to communicate as clearly and professionally as possible, that always comes through, and that's what matters. And that concludes my art industry advice. Hopefully you guys found some of this helpful, and to anyone out there looking to break into industry work, good luck, and I hope you're able to use some of this advice to make that happen for you. As always, big thank you to my channel members, Café Soleil, Lotus Dreams Art, and Joseph Solomon for their support. If you want to join them and get a bunch of cool perks that you can learn more about by clicking the card above, please consider joining my channel. Thank you guys for watching, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.